Hello. I would like to, uh, what I'm going to describe as fully model uh, this uh, situation that you see here on your screen. And when I say I'm going to fully model this, what I mean is I'm going to take these words, I've got a verbal representation that I'm starting from, and I'm just going to show all the different representations that I can. So I'm going to make motion maps, I'm going to make a position versus time graph, I'm going to make a velocity versus time graph, I'm going to make equations, and I want us then to look at how could I use these different representations to actually solve this problem. So, uh, Lise Meitner's car moves with a speed of 20 meters for every one second, and Mae Jemison's car moves at 15 meters for every one second. Uh, if you don't know who Lise Meitner or Mae Jemison are, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't, but those are some very Googleable names. Um, they are some of my favorite physics people, um, so I just wanted to use them in an example. Um, because they have both done amazing work. Uh, Mae Jemison, still alive, uh, at least Meitner, uh, no longer. But uh, definitely Google them, check them out. So I'm going to use two different colored dots for uh, my, two, uh, my two cars. So um, if I've got a, a, a number line here, and I haven't put numbers onto the number line, but there's no information saying, like, Lise Meitner's going left to right, May Jemison's going uh, the opposite of whichever one I said there. Um, there's no information saying this one's driving to the left, that one's driving to the right. Um, it doesn't matter. Besides, if you were watching from the street and you're like, oh, Lise Meitner, in my imagination, is driving to the right, I was really hoping she'd be driving to the left. Well, then in your imagination, just cross the street and now she's moving in whichever direction you wanted anyway. So it's your imagination. You get to decide who's going towards the left and who's going towards the right. It doesn't matter. Likewise, with where is the zero place on this number line? It doesn't matter. It's an imaginary number line that exists only in our heads. Now, what is important is this information that they start 200 meters apart they drive in opposite directions, so they're driving towards each other, and I want to know where they'll pass each other. So I'm going to take this dot, I'm going to use red for Lise Meitner, and I'm just going to say that she starts at this location, and Mae Jemison starts at this location. I won't put them right across from each other because then they'll run into each other, so I'll just put Mae Jemison in a different lane. I'll just put her down here. So these are 200, uh, I've got uh, these hash marks then are each uh, 10 meters from one to the next. So like I could number these, here's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on to here is 200 meters. Why did I choose it that way? I don't know, it just felt simple to me to say that and I'll mark these down. I'll say that here is zero meters and here is 200 meters. Now, if somebody else wanted to say, well, why not have the zero right in the middle? And Lee Meitner starts at negative 100, May Jemison starts at positive 100 meters, then that's fine, you can do that. But I'm gonna make my number line go from zero to 200. So let's see, Lise Meitner goes 20 meters each second. So one second later, she's here. One second later, go 20 forwards more. One second later, go forwards by 20. One second later, go forwards by 20. One second later, go forwards by 20. And I can just keep on doing that. And then I can do the same with May Jemison. And here, I hope we can see that it's definitely going to be helpful to include our arrows, and it's really going to be helpful to include some uh, markings for time. So May Jemison's car goes 15 meters per second. Um, Lise Meitner likes to speed. May Jemison is not speeding. So 
I go back by 15, so I'm going back one and a half tick marks. So then I go half one and a half tick marks. One and a half. One and a half. One and a half. And so we can see that May Jemison's dots are a little bit closer to each other than Lee Smeitner's. Now, we can see here that there are actually multiple spots where our dots are, we have dots right next to each other. But if we make, uh, I'm going to make some arrows and I'm going to add some times on here. And I think that's going to help us make some sense out of like, well, isn't the, don't they pass each other when the dots are lined up? Except I've got multiple spots where the dots are lined up. So how do I tell which one gives us an answer to this question? So I'm just going to draw some, I'm going to make some red arrows for the Smeitner. mark on those to show that these are all meant to be the same velocity. And then I've got a smaller arrow for May Jemison. And now this helps me see who's driving which way. And you know what to be consistent I'll just put that arrow in there for right here. But now how do I decide and I could put the two hash marks on here for May Jemison, although these arrows are small enough, I don't think that's really going to show up well, so I'm going to skip that. These blue arrows are all meant to be the same length. But looking at when, looking at times, then here's where it's really helpful to add, okay, this is at zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, and so on. Because if we look, let's say, at uh, this spot right here, it certainly looks like these two dots are lined up. And so we might trick ourselves into thinking that with these two dots lined up, oh, that's where they pass each other. Except if we pay attention to our dots, Lise Meitner was here at seven seconds, and Mae Jemison was there at four seconds. So they both passed by that spot, but they weren't there at the same time. So what I need to look for when I'm looking for where do they pass each other, that I need to look for them being at the same place at the same time. So what I'm looking at right now is that at a time of five seconds, they hadn't passed each other yet. But at a time of six seconds, now they have passed each other. And so the answer to when do they pass each other is sometime in between five seconds and six seconds. Where do they pass each other is somewhere, somewhere in between these dots. So somewhere around here is where they're passing each other, um, somewhere in between that fifth and sixth dot. Now, my motion map in this case isn't going to give me a super precise answer. So I guess if I really wanted to, then I could, if I want to insist on using the motion map, then I could maybe break those up into like going dots every half second 
we're going dots every tenth of a second to look for a more precise answer, although that's going to end up being really hard work. And I don't know that that's my best plan. So the motion map in this case is going to give me an answer I can see when by reading the times on the dots, and I can read where by looking at the number on my number line. But I'm at best with this situation, I'm going to get just an approximate answer somewhere between five and six seconds, somewhere between this position and that position. So there's my motion map. Now, if I think about making a position versus time graph, Lee Smeitner, I know, starts at a position of zero meters. So her starting position is zero meters on the position versus time graph. And her line, she's moving with a constant velocity, so it's a straight line position versus time graph. And yes, I'm using x to represent position. I use x's for horizontal position. I use y's for vertical position. They're moving horizontally, so I'm using x to represent position. So Lise Meitner starts at zero meters position and goes up to higher positions. So her straight line is rising. Mae Jemison, blue line, starts at a position of 200 meters and her position decreases. So she's gonna have a downward sloping line and her line is gonna be less steep than Lise Meitner. Now, I am just eyeballing this graph right now. And so I didn't actually measure out proper slopes on these, but I know that Lee Meitner's graph would have to have a slope of positive 20 meters for every one second. So if I'm thinking rise over run for every one second that I go over, for every one second over, then I go up by 20 meters is the slope of Lee Meitner's graph, whereas May Jemison's graph, for every one second that I go over, then I go down by 15 meters. Now, May Jemison's slope is negative. She has a negative velocity, not because negative is a bad thing. Negative isn't worse than positive. It's just the opposite direction. Of the positive direction. And so when we pick at the very beginning, I'm going to make Lee Meitner going forwards on the number line, May Jemison going back on the number line. If you really wanted May Jemison to be going forwards on the number line, then again, in your imagination, cross the street and watch from the other side. And now May Jemison is going to the right and Lee Meitner is going to the left. It's not a big deal. So May Jemison has a slope of negative 15 meters for each second. Now, if you wanted to use the position versus time graph to solve this, uh, then you would need to carefully measure out these slopes. Uh, oh, and also Lee Meitner is starting at a position here, starting at a position of positive 200 meters. So if you measured out these slopes like on graph paper, then we could read right off of the graph, we could read where they pass each other is this intersection point. When they're at the same time, they're at the same place. And so this intersection point, you could read straight off of your graph, this time, that place is where they pass each other. Now, again, using that graph alone to get a correct solution would require us to make a careful uh, exactly drawn graph. Now on the velocity versus time graph, if we think about Lise Meitner, at a time of zero seconds, she's got a velocity of, at a time of zero seconds, she's got a velocity of 20 meters for each second. At a time of one second, her velocity is the same amount. At a time of two seconds, her velocity is the same amount. At three seconds, it's the same velocity. So the velocity versus time graph is the graph that shows this number is always 20. 
which turns out to just be a horizontal line at 20 meters per second. Likewise, Mae Jemison is going to have a graph where her velocity is starts at negative 15, stays at negative 15, stays at negative 15 meters for every second. So May Jemison's graph is going to look like this at negative 15 for her velocity. So we could also use the velocity versus time graphs to solve. Um, I'm going to leave it to you uh, to think about how could I use the velocity versus time graph to solve for when and where they meet? I'm not going to focus on that one here in uh, this uh, video. Now, if I wanted to use equations, uh, if I think about these position versus time graphs, we've made equations from those before. So I'm going to write out the red equation and in this case, using the language of math, we're making graphs, uh, we're making equations of straight lines, y equals mx plus b, except the m is the slope, that's the velocity, the b is the starting position, y is our, y is our dependent variable, x is our independent variable, so I want to make that substitution that time goes in place of the generic math language x, position goes in the generic math language of y, because I'm writing out a physics relationship, not a math relationship. So when I write out the equation of this line for May Jemison, I've got for the y's I'm using position. Remember, in the language of physics, the green is the language of math. What I'm writing here in red is the language of physics. And in the language of physics, x means position. So position, the dependent variable, equals the slope. I know the slope of May Jemison's, sorry, uh, Lise Meitner's line. Slope times the independent variable is time, plus the y-intercept for Lise Meitner, she started at a position of zero meters. So I've just written out an equation, y equals mx plus b, where I made the substitutions from a generic math talk for this specific graph of position and time for Lise Meitner. And I'm going to do the exact same thing now for May Jemison. Dependent variable is position equals slope. I can't forget the negative sign here. She's got a negative slope on her graph. So negative 15 meters for each second times the independent variable of t for time, plus May Jemison started at a position of positive 200 meters. And so now I have two equations that represent those lines on the graph. Now, I've got all kinds of tools that I can use for these equations, because if I want to solve for when and where do these cars pass each other, then that would be when the positions of the two cars, when the position of Lee Smart Meitner and the position of May Jemison are equal to each other. So I could set these two equations equal to each other and I could solve some algebra. Or if you know how to tell your calculator, if you know how to input these equations into your calculator, then uh, you could just use the calculator to solve for where is that intersection point. We could solve for this intersection point on the calculator if you know how. And if you don't know how, but you have a graphing calculator, I think that that's a skill that's really worth exploring because it makes your problem solving so much simpler. We can get an exact solution um, pretty quickly. Once we can create the equation, then we can uh, put the equations into the calculator and solve from there. Or you can solve algebraically, setting the red x equal to the blue x 
do some algebra, you solve for t, and then you could put that time back into either position equation to get your solution. So we have uh, modeled this as much as we need to, and you could uh, finish that off. Uh, whichever way of solving works for you is what you should do. That's why we have so many different ways of representing this, because one person's best method might not be another person's best method. I'll see you later.